Kruger Terrain Tools, or KTT for short, is a new set of nodes for Houdini developed by Samuel Krug that produce high quality results in less time than most other terrain tool sets. Now, that's a big claim, but let me explain. As you've seen in the thumbnail and some of the renders on screen now, the tool set can have some amazing results. The erosion solvers have amazing detail retention in rocky areas and feel really natural in the way that they create channels down the terrain. It also comes with a pretty robust texturing workflow, especially the fluvial advection node, which is similar in function to Gaia's color erosion node. Also, I want to be clear, I'm not being sponsored to say any of this. I've just been following this project for a while and I think it's really cool. I do however have an affiliate link, so if you want to take a look at the tool set, the link's in the description. It also allows for tons of user control because of just how many nodes there are, letting you draw valleys or ridges, lakes, or place mountains or craters wherever you want. It also has some of the fastest erosion solvers I've personally ever used while not compromising on quality, which makes iterating on your terrains so much more seamless. The way the toolset achieves this is with a combination of code in OpenCL and VEX in order to leverage the speed of your GPU. This is honestly one of the biggest draws for me personally. I hate it when the software I'm working in is constantly slowing down when I do any action. The pricing of the toolset is also more than reasonable with an option as low as $15. Now enough talking, time to show you my full first impression of the toolset that I recorded right after installing it. I'll give you my full thoughts on it at the end of the video, so if you'd like, you can skip to that timestamp. So here in Houdini, I basically don't know what I'm doing at all. Um, <laughs> I've used Houdini for a couple of hours, just got like kind of familiar with it. So to start off with, what you have to do is make an, a geo. Yeah, geo container. And then we can go in here with enter. And then now we make a height field. And on the Gumroad page, it said that there was a handbook. Yeah, handbook. So I'm going to read through this real quick. Okay, so it actually should, like has the stuff to create this height field. I don't need to do it. I just do it in the handbook. Okay, so I would probably, I might be able to push it to 8K, but I would probably be around 4K for mine because I only have 16 gigabytes of normal RAM. So this is kind of going over general workflows you're going to be dealing with. Okay, and yeah, this has all of the nodes and explanations about them. So yeah, you have all of these different examples that you can create. I think I'm ready in that case to start making a terrain. So I think I just take this height field and then I can use, or if I drag this out and then I hit tab and go to KTT. So I think there was, I think there was an, uh, a mountain node, right? Yeah, mountain. And then if I view this, and then I think you can use the basic built-in height field nodes so like height field noise i can plug that in afterwards and yeah and then on the noise i'll turn the amplitude down just to get some detail around the mountain i guess and then i'm pretty sure it's as simple as just doing like a smooth fluvial erosion yeah that looks so cool and that's fast too i think i'm only on like a 1024 by 1024 yeah but i can just turn this to say 0.25 and then it'll take a second to calculate um, which you can see down here in Houdini, which is so nice, by the way. I wish Blender had this, um, being able to see what it's cooking when you change anything on a node. There we go. So now this is uh, 8K? No, 4K. Damn. Yeah, these details are so sweet. And this is a, a really simple node tree. Um, so I think I'm going to just keep playing around with this, see where I get. I'm going to turn this grid spacing up just while I'm working. I'm just this. Yeah. This is a pretty sweet kind of plateau we've got going. And I'm not really using any reference right now. I'm just messing around with the tool set. What else can I add to this? I think there's a uh, cracks node, which could be fun. Probably after this fluvial erosion. So we'll just go here and take a KTT cracks. And then if I feed that into the terrace, nice. And then if I view this eroded, ooh, I, I do kind of like that. It adds these kind of craggly details if I, if I mute this. Yeah, I kind of like that. Okay, let's view this at a higher resolution. We'll go back to 4K because I don't know if my PC can handle more than that. Ooh, nice. Okay, so that took like a, a, about a minute to bake on my PC, um, which is definitely not bad for the amount of detail we're getting here. Yeah, I'm loving this. This erosion model that uh, he, ha he has really does well with this, this rocky detail. Keeps it very well while also having these channels. There's obviously a lot more that can be done to this terrain, but just for this quick kind of first impressions video, I think I'm going to try and get onto the texturing workflow. Okay, I don't remember what node it is for the texturing. Wait, is it just to apply texture? Okay, so it's just apply texture. So if I go back to here, 
and do a KTT apply texture. I uh, view this. Yeah, can I just like drag the texture in here? Oh my god, I can. Wow. Houdini. <laughs> so this is just like a random rock texture from Quixel. And then I'm going to do the Voronoi tiling. That seems good to me. And then I'll do a color distort. And if you're wondering where I got this workflow from, it from, it's from one of Krug's videos. I saw him do this and I thought it made some pretty cool stuff. So I'm basically just copying him. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So now we basically just use that to get like a good distribution of good uh, values and colors from a real life rock texture. And then there's a fluvial advection node, which yeah, we'll kind of take all these colors and advect them. So I'm going to do the snow from back here before we do the texturing. And then I think you combine it later. I could be wrong. And I think I might actually want to go back and make these not completely flat, which I'll do in a second. And then, yeah, I want to go back here. Well, let me finish this first. So I think now what I do is go down here and do a KTT combine with the snow. Okay, I'm not really sure how to do this, so I'm going to go back to the handbook and see if it has an example for it. Okay, it's here. So he takes the height field, mountain, terrace, erosion. Okay, simple stuff. And then the snow, and then KTT create color fields. Okay. So I figured it out how to do this snow base, or how to add snow. You basically, or at least this is what I'm doing. I could be wrong, but I mean, it, it works. So I'm taking my resampled height field, and I'm adding some snow, and then I go to the add color fields and I just make the snow uh, white and then I do a KTT combine set to blend and I use that snow mask that the snow generated um, to blend between them. So there we go, that works. Um, and I think, I'm not really liking how these cliffs will look. So I think I'm going to do a, I'm gonna move these down and then I'm gonna do a KTT tint. Add a tint layer, interesting. Let's cool that, that, that's how it works. And I want to mask it by slope. I want to tint it down on the value channel. And then now, yeah, I think that makes the fluvial advection look better. And then I'm going to view this at a higher resolution. Ooh, sweet. Yeah, this is really nice. You got the snow coming down in the, in the channels. Got this nice advection of the colors. Nice. Really liking this. Okay, I, like I said though, I do think I want to make these plateaus not as flat. And I think I should turn this tint strength down. This does it, this looks a little too unnatural. Or maybe I can turn like the fall off down or up, I guess. So yeah, yeah maybe I'll do, I, I assume that'll just be like a blur pretty much. So it'll have a smoother fall off. Yeah, I do still think I want to turn the strength down though. So I'll put the value to like 0.3 instead of 0.1. Okay. And then I might do a fluvial advection after this step as well. Let me turn my resample back on. Yeah, just to kind of get this snow dirtied up as well. Because if it's been sitting there for a little bit, it will get dirty. Probably turn the strength down a little. Yeah, nice. I think doing that fluvial ad advection step after the snow has a lot of nice detail because it kind of blends in uh, as it flows down with the rest of the colors on the terrain. Okay, now let me finally do what I said I was going to do and go back up here and make these not as flat. So that would be at the KTT adjust step, right? Yes. So I think what I can do is, so with this KTT adjust, I can do a KTT combine and I'll combine the old height field in. And then if I view this, I can just blend between them. And so I think I'll just add a little bit more or a little bit of that old height back in so that the tops of these are a little bit displaced. Yeah, I think I like that better. Um, if I just mute this combine, this is with it being completely flat, and then unmute it, we get a kind of more natural progression, I think. I do think I want to turn it down a little bit. I want it a little more flat, so maybe like 0 0.2 instead of 0 0.7, 0 0.27. Mm, yeah, yeah, I think that's good. So it seems like adding or making this uh, more bulged up made a lot more snow which I'm, I'm okay with, I think. I wanna, I think I wanna turn it down. Ooh. So let's turn this resample up, and then I'll view the snow base. All 
All right, yeah, I think that's more what I was after. We've got this kind of dusting, and then there's like patches where the terrain is flat and the snow gathers, and then it, you know, rolls down the hill. So I think I'm, I'm liking this. This looks pretty sweet. And while I'm making this, I'm kind of thinking about, uh, I'm kind of thinking about like this kind of thing, um, like Icelandic uh, terrain, which like even, you know, I wasn't even using a reference for this. I was just kind of thinking about it in my head and this still turned out all right. Um, there's obviously loads that can be improved on. This is my first time using KTT and I'm pretty happy with this terrain. Let's do a KTT path traced light map. And this is good for previs. Um, nice. Yeah, that looks sweet. Uh, I think I want to change the sun angle, but that's going to take like 10 years. So I'm going to do a KTT shadow map. Or no, not shadow map. I think it's shaded viewport is what I want. Yeah, shade viewport. And so this is just a simpler version of this, I think. So I'm gonna use this to determine where I should put the sun. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. So yeah, this is a really good previous tool. Um, these two nodes combined, using this one to kind of figure out where the sun should be. And then you, you know, use this one for the final. So yeah, I'm liking this terrain. I think I might try to see if I, my PC can handle 8K. My computer actually did bake out the AK terrain, but it bricked my audio recording, which now sounds like this. Um, so while I pan around this final terrain, I'll give you my wrap up thoughts on the toolset as a whole after using it a bit more. This toolset is amazing. The details you can achieve are some of the best I've seen. All of the terrain features are crisp where they need to be, but it still blends on the softer dirt, silt, and other loose sediments really well. The performance is also really nice. While working on a 1K by 1K map, it's basically real time for me with these specs. I also appreciate the ease of use. This is basically the first thing I've ever done in Houdini, and it was still really easy to get into. The handbook is a really nice addition. The information in there was incredibly valuable. Whenever I got stuck, I could just look at the examples for the note I was having issues with, and it told me most of what I needed to know. The only criticisms I can think of are that the non-determinism of some of the erosion models are a little annoying, but it's worth it for the speed the GPU multi-threading provides. I also think that having the documentation on a website would be a nice addition to work alongside the handbook. That way you could look at it before you purchase, and I think I just prefer having documentation in a separate window instead of inside of my program, but that could just be me. So overall, KTT is great, and I'll for sure be using it in the future. Like I said earlier, if you want to pick it up, I have an affiliate link in the description, which will give me a little kickback from your purchase. And if you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe, it really helps the channel out. But most importantly, have a wonderful day.